Hey, Randy Brown here. I get this question all the time on my channel. Not all the time, but it happens quite a bit. So I leave a comment sometimes about it, but it can seem callous. So I thought I'd do a video and help explain this to you guys that are interested. It's not something that I get too hung up about myself. Uh, it's important in context sometimes when you're having a conversation with someone. So I'll even ask it myself sometimes. But even though it's not that important to me, I respect that it's important to you guys and I want to answer your questions and, and help uh, shed light on things. That question is what style of mantis boxing do I do? And the long and short is my own. I don't subscribe to any lineage anymore or any style per se of mantis I don't believe there's a lot of distinction between them, but let's get into that. Let's peel back the layers of the onion. I, what distinguishes one style of mantis from another? Let's start with that. There's a couple things that can be different amongst them. One is forms. And in styles, there's a group of styles that first branched out which happened in the late 1800s. You see the uh, creation of plum blossom praying mantis, taiji praying mantis, otherwise known as supreme ultimate praying mantis boxing. You have seven star praying mantis boxing appear. Eventually, they want to distinguish themselves even more, so they say supreme ultimate plum blossom praying mantis boxing. These styles are very similar to each other. They all use a similar methodology. I don't believe they're that different from one another, so I don't, distinct, I don't recognize them as separate styles. They are more like branding if you get into it. And why I say that, so let's look at the forms. They have forms in common by name, but by name only. They're all different from one another. Is that what makes it a different style? That you change the form, use the same name, but we do different choreography? That, there's nothing to stand on there. I mean, if you do a different set of choreography, that's fine. But is that enough to distinguish it as a separate thing? When all the moves inside use the same stance, they use the same throws, their strikes just in different orders, suppose, again, you can see why I don't really subscribe to this. And at the end of the day, if you can't use the form to fight, and you don't know the techniques and how they work, and even if you do, if they're not showing up in your sparring, I, I'm disconnected there. That's what I don't, I don't go along with that. A form in its original state was a boxing set for some fighter, for some boxer. That was their sequence of techniques. A bulk of the forms in Mantis were created in the 1900s. They are not that old and certainly not something that we should be basing uh, a whole dogmatic approach or setting up guidelines around because those forms, we don't even know if the people creating them could fight with Mantis. Maybe they could fight, but could they fight with the techniques that are in the forms? We don't know. So again, why are we separating ourselves from one another? There's a small enough number of Mantis boxers in the world today that we really don't need to be creating separate pockets from one another and making that even smaller. At the end of the day, we want to see this art survive and go forward, so we should be uniting and trying to make this stuff functional and make it work. And when we practice a boxing set of somebody that was alive 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 100 years ago, we're practicing the art of a dead man. And at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, why are we doing that? Do we, do we use the same techniques Let's say we knew all the techniques in, in a form, a boxing set. Do we use them when we fight? If not, 
Again, why are we practicing them? We need to make the art our own. I've given out three black belts so far. And every time I give a black belt out, I've told them each the same thing. The art is yours. Make it your own. Make it work for you. Don't be a copy of me. That's not going to help you. If you, unless you're the exact same size, speed, flexibility, strength, everything, it's not going to help you. And I have one black belt that's very close in size to me and movement, very similar. It would pain me greatly if I passed away someday and somebody were interested in what I was teaching and went back and they only talked to him because he was the closest in movement and the, in the use of the art to me as, as you could get. That's not my art. My art is to coach you to make it your own. You copy the teacher the first couple of years to get your, your foundation down. But that doesn't mean it stays like that. I'm 5'6". What if I've got a guy that's uh, one, one of my brown belts right now is 6'2". He's not going to use the same techniques I do. And if he tried, he would get punished in fighting. He, he does it. Sometimes we have this conversation. And I have to remind him, that move's not for you. That's my move. I use it all the time, not yours. And that's okay. Sorry. It's, it, it's not a, a dig like you just can't do that. It's just a, it's not a smart decision. My art is to, like I said, empower you guys. Like make you better so that you can make this your own. That's what I, I, my goal is. That's my art. My personal fighting art, my own, once I pass away, that's doesn't matter anymore that was mine somebody else can make it better make it theirs make it work for them that's what matters so at the end of the day for like delin demarcating a style from one style from another just based on forms i don't subscribe to that but there's another facet of this in mantis that you see there's a big distinction between a couple of styles from the others and that would be the stance, the fighting stance. We look at six harmony, and which is the progenitor to another style, eight step. They use the santi stance, the uh, three dimensional stance, versus the monkey stance or the bow stance found in the other styles of mantis. So, is that something that makes it a different style? I would argue no. Because at the end of the day, that stance is great. I actually think that's a superior stance in most situations. But it's not full functional stance. It doesn't work all the time. Classic example, when you're grappling. If you try to use that stance in the clinch, you will get destroyed. You will get bulldozed over and knocked on your ass. Because you, you got 60% of your weight on that back leg. However... When you are further out, that's a superior stance, it, hands down. Because you got 40% weight on the front leg, so it can pop up and defend groin kicks, leg kicks, and leave your hands free to defend the upstairs and not be dropping your hands downstairs where they don't belong, and then you're getting pummeled in the head after you try. So in the clinch, Monkey stance or bow stance, I wouldn't even do a bow stance personally because 70 30, 70% 70 of your weight on the front leg, even those of you guys that do 60 40, 60 70% of your weight on that front leg, you're going to get plucked all day long. You'll get snapped down, you'll get pulled right over. Arm drags galore. Um, so you really like the monkey stance where you're 50 50. What you see wrestlers use, that's a superior stance for grappling. And then for striking and power generation and defending the three levels, definitely the Santi stance. So Six Harmony, which isn't even Mantis, it's actually Xing Yi Chuan. Um, 
they only had one form up until the early 1900s, and then they added other forms to their curriculum. And that's where you see the mantis hooks start appear in their forms because the form before that, there's no mantis hooks, zero mantis. And at the end of the day, we got to look at, well, what's, what's making it mantis to begin with? It's the hooks. And you can, you guys can go to my website. I've written some articles lately about that, about the hooks and are they really mantis? Are they really a thing? Uh, check that out if you have more interest in this. But Six Harmony comes from Xingyi Twin. And eventually they still use that stance. But aside from that, there's not really a lot that's different. So if we look at Mantis as a whole, what makes it Mantis? These hooks, these hooks that we use, hooking techniques. All right. Then there's no style. There's no... This style of mantis, that style of mantis. Uh, if if somebody makes it a style that's separate, it's really just comes down to branding, and that's what they did in the late 1800s anyway, early 1900s maybe. It happened. It might have happened after the boxer uprising, as we went into the 20th century. So I I hope that this helps explain things to you guys and gives you some background and why I don't really spend a lot of time on this question and why I don't get hung up on it. Like I said, we got to make, we got a mission to make Mantis boxing real again, make it work. That's all that matters. Not what style anybody's doing. At the end of the day, we're all Mantis boxers. Let's make it happen. Get hooked.